welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about Apple's decision to switch from Intel to ARM processors in the next generation of its desktop and laptop computers. This, I think, is one of the most significant computer hardware developments for some time and will have big implications far beyond the world of Apple. So, Let's go and examine what is going on, and to start, I need to explain the differences between Intel and ARM processors. All microprocessors are based on a specific instruction set architecture, or ISA, that determines how they function and what software they can run. Today, almost all desktop and laptop processors have an ISA called x86. This was first used in Intel's 8086 processor launched in 1978. Since that time, lots of processors with an x86 instruction set have come to market, with most of them manufactured by Intel, AMD or VIA. Today, most new x86 processors use a 64-bit version of the x86 instruction set called x86-64 or AMD-64, which was introduced by AMD in 2003. Now, while practically all desktops and laptops have an x86 processor, Apple and Android tablets and smartphones have an ARM processor. These have an ARM instruction set architecture which is incompatible with x86. This means that software compiled for traditional PCs and laptops cannot directly run on Apple and Android mobile devices and vice versa. So, how do x86 and ARM differ? Well, all processors can have an architecture that is either CISC, which stands for Complex Instruction Set Computing, or RISC, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. CISC processors execute a relatively small number of complex instructions to complete each task, whilst RISC processors execute a large number of simpler instructions to achieve the same thing. This allows ARM and other RISC processors to have fewer transistors than those in x86 and other CISC processors. Because of this, ARM processors consume less power than their x86 counterparts, which makes them ideal for use in mobile devices. ARM processors are designed by ARM Holdings, which, unlike Intel and AMD, is not a microprocessor manufacturer. Instead, ARM Holdings designs the cores of ARM processors, which are then licensed to other companies to include in their own chips. Just some of the companies that manufacture ARM processors include Samsung, Nvidia, Qualcomm and Rockchip. Apple also designs processors based on an ARM core, which are currently used in iPhones and iPads and are manufactured for Apple by third parties. When Apple launched its first Macintosh computer in 1984, it was based on a microprocessor called the 68000. This was designed and manufactured by Motorola, and for nearly a decade Macs were based on processors with a 68000 instruction set. However, in 1994, Apple switched to use a new series of processors called PowerPC. These were developed in the early 1990s by an alliance forged between Apple, IBM and Motorola, and were based on RISC technology. PowerPC processors were used in Apple desktops and laptops until 2006. After this time, the company transitioned to x86 chips manufactured by Intel. This was a very significant move indeed, and means that since 2006, practically all laptop and desktop computers, whether Macs or PCs, have been based on processors with the same x86 architecture. Over the past decade, we've also seen the very significant rise of Android and Apple tablets and smartphones that have an ARM processor. And so, until this point in time, x86 processors have dominated the desktop and laptop space, while ARM has reigned supreme on mobile. On June 22, 2020, Apple CEO Tim Cook announced that the next generation of Apple desktop and laptop computers will be based on ARM processors designed by Apple rather than x86 chips from Intel. 
These new Apple computers will start to arrive before the end of 2020 and will be able to run exactly the same applications as Apple's iPads and iPhones as they will share the same instruction set architecture. So, in effect, by migrating its Macs to ARM, Apple is removing the platform distinction between its desktops, laptops, tablets and smartphones. In the future, there will no longer be Apple desktop apps and Apple mobile apps, but just Apple apps. And this clearly is a very big thing indeed. What's also a big thing is the use of ARM processors for mainstream desktop computing. Today, a few people, including some viewers of this YouTube channel, do some or all of their desktop computing on an ARM-based device such as a Raspberry Pi. Right now, this does remain unusual. However, as new ARM-based Macs become more and more common, so ARM-based desktop computing will become run-of-the-mill. And this may well be the beginning of the end for the dominance of Intel and x86 hardware. Already, Apple has announced that Microsoft 365 and Adobe's Creative Cloud applications will be directly supported on its new ARM desktops and laptops. It's also demonstrated ARM versions of Affinity Photo and Cinema 4D. As more and more heavyweight applications are ported to run natively on ARM Macs, so it's also possible that they will become available for other ARM-based computers, and this in turn could trigger a much wider transition to ARM devices. While most desktop and laptop PCs still have x86 processors, Microsoft has created a version of Windows 10 that will run on ARM hardware. In addition, Microsoft is also now selling its Surface Pro X laptop, which has an ARM processor. Because the Surface Pro X is RISC-based, it can also offer a better battery life than a CISC-based x86 alternative. Like any other hardware running Windows 10 on ARM, the Surface Pro X can run ARM applications as well as 32-bit x86 Windows applications via emulation. So far, the device has been criticised for being unable to run major 64-bit x86 Windows applications such as Adobe's Creative Cloud. However, given that Adobe is already porting its applications for the new ARM Macs, it would be very surprising if at some point it didn't offer Creative Cloud for Windows ARM devices. The launch of ARM MacBooks is also likely to see demand for more ARM Windows laptops, not least in pursuit of battery life improvements. And so, fairly soon, ARM processors are likely to make a bigger and bigger dent in the top left quadrant of our grid, which will soon be the last bastion of x86 processor dominance. Transitioning to ARM will give Apple complete control of the microprocessors used in its systems. Clearly, it will take several years for the majority of Apple desktop and laptop hardware to be ARM-based. But when this has occurred, Apple will have a seamless, single-app platform across all fixed and mobile form factors. Meanwhile, Google will probably have retained its dominance of the remainder of the mobile space, with Microsoft presiding as king of the desktop and laptop ecosystem, which will in the short term remain largely x86 based. In this context, it is worth remembering that most people have Windows and Android rather than Apple devices, so Apple's single app platform will only be used by a minority of people. This point made, it's interesting to ponder how and if Microsoft and Google will try to emulate what Apple will have achieved. Ten years from now, people may look back and be surprised that microprocessors with different instruction sets were retained in fixed and mobile computing for so long, and Microsoft and Google must be well aware of this. So far, Microsoft has failed spectacularly to invade the mobile space. Google, on the other hand, does provide its Chrome OS operating system for Chromebooks with either ARM or x86 processors. It's also just possible that the launch of ARM Macs will result in a greater demand for ARM devices, including those which run Chrome OS and which will support Android mobile apps. And so personally, I think that Google has more chance of taking ground in fixed computing than Microsoft does of finally getting a strong footing in the mobile marketplace.
As we've seen in this video, Apple is about to jump ship from x86 to ARM, with Microsoft also dipping its toes in the ARM waters. And it's not just in the area of end-user computing that we're seeing a rising interest in ARM. Not least, Amazon is now offering cloud servers powered by ARM processors. And in May 2020, it also launched AWS EC2 instances based on its new Graviton 2 ARM processor, which offer up to a 40% cost performance ratio improvement compared to using x86 based cloud servers. Amazon can offer these type of cost savings as servers with an ARM processor are more energy efficient. If you want to know more about AWS, you can look at my video all about Amazon Web Services. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.